In this video, we're going to look at some of the safety features of venous thoracic outlet obstruction, which is considered the commonest form of thoracic outlet obstruction, with the others being arterial and neurogenic. Patients may be asymptomatic or can present with symptoms, in which case this is termed thoracic venous outlet obstruction syndrome. It occurs at this point here, at the level of the thoracic outlet. There are a few important structures to bear in mind when evaluating this. As the first feature, as you can see on the CT scan, is extensive collateralization of venous contrast, which has been initially administered through the left arm, which does not bypass readily across the left brachycephalic vein. The contrast comes to the point of the thoracic outlet but then diverts away. There are several structures which can hinder its passage here. The most commonly being a bony obstruction due to the course of the clavicle and the first rib. In this case there is a reasonable bony gap but there is still a considerable obstruction which could either be due to a crossing muscle or a fibrous band. If you watch this space here, there are a few important muscles to be aware of. The first is the scalenous muscles or the scalene muscles where the scalene anterior and middle muscles attach to the first rib and the posterior one to the second rib. And you can see here that one of the muscles pass very closely in close approximation with the crossing site. The second is the subclavius muscle, which is a muscle that is beneath the course of the clavicle here. And you should also follow that muscle to see if there's any contributing factor. In this case, it is most likely that this obstruction is due to a fibrous band or the orientation of the scalenus anterior and middle muscles against the first rib. References containing important links have been pasted below.